what actually is great when we're young that we don't have later? And I'm not talking about physical. There's an interesting answer to that question. The traditional theory about aging is the long, slow rot theory, right? Our mental and physical skills decline over time. There's nothing we can do to stop that slide. That theory actually dates back to Freud. And so by the like 1990s, we've got a long list of all the stuff that declines. And then in the mid nineties, cracks start to appear. And in New York, actually, you get Yakov Stern working on cognitive reserve, Elkanon Goldberg working on the neuroprotective powers of expertise and wisdom and a couple other things like that. And between the 1995 and today, we now know that across the boards, all the stuff that we used to think declined over time with a couple of exceptions that I'll speak about, which sort of answer your question, I think decline over time. We now know they're all user to lose it skills. So if, if you never stop using them, you can hang on to them, even advance them far later in life than anybody thought possible. This was sort of the backstory that led into NAR. This is 20 years of research in and around peak performance aging. The, in terms of what declines, what you might want to hold on to younger, there is somewhat of a, what I think is a lazy and incorrect argument around fluid intelligence. What is true is white matter. The one of the only things that we can't seem to reverse is white matter density declines over time in the brain. And that links directly to processing speed. And so as white matter declines, we tend to become a little more risk averse. Let me back up a little bit. Cause you said something really important that processing speed decline. So white matter is myelination. So in your brain, you've got neurons and they form networks like long axons and myelon wraps the axons there. It's insulation. And over time, certain parts of that brain, that insulation thins. Okay. So, so um, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of break down each thing. So, so for, so myelination happens when you're doing an activity or a mental activity over and over, then the connection between yes. various synapses gets stronger because it's wrapped and protected by this myelin. And so, so for instance, memory could be much stronger when you're younger, because that's when you have more myelin to wrap around memories. Memory won't be stronger. Myelination is about processing speed. How fast the neurons are taught, how fast the brain is trading information. Memories are stored in diverse neural networks and they're, they tend to be very redundant. So processing speed is less impact memory is less impacted by processing speed so let's let's talk about let's take it one step further because you highlighted that it was important but one of the things that's interesting this isn't really work covered in our country but it's going on and it's neat so the cutting edge of a lot of neurophysiology right now is about the bones your bones are where your body stores most of its minerals all, a lot of its nutrients almost everything that runs the brain including calcium which runs every kind of exchange in the brain is stored in bones. So there's a lot of thinking that says, hey, bone density is very correlated to preserving physical function and cognitive function. And this is the reason why. And we're getting really good at solving bone density problems. And there's some new evidence that suggests that the decline in myelination is actually a bone density problem. And that by fixing the bones, we're gonna end up not losing our processing speed. But right now that loss in myelination is correlated with risk aversion in older adults.